I do this once a year, so I create muscle once a year and don't use them for the rest. <laughs> if you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be the beginning of my new reading challenge of Big Book Part 2. I attempted, that, that is the right word, last year on reading bigger books, books that are over 500 pages. Basically, I write all the ones I'm planning on reading, by that I mean hoping, on a paper and put this in this cute little cat jar and I just pick one every month and it's the book that I have to read that month. I'm allowed to put it back once and choose something else or just choose out of the pile, but it's just to try and like read more consistently big books, ones that scare me. Some of the lessons that I've learned last year will be uh, put to use in this video because I realized that I ended up having so many big scary classics or even like really popular books that I was kind of scared of disliking or I thought they would be too slow or some of them were actually too slow and it was hard to consistently read one every month at the same time as uh, reading the ones I'm dying to read that month you know books are coming out or I just feel in the mood to read certain books so I tried to like mix it up a little bit more this time but basically I would love for you to participate either by just reading also a big book a month or just as many as you can or uh, by choosing the same one every month and we can read it together. So I'm gonna be sharing with you the 12 that I've chosen. Uh, in two categories though, you will be the one helping me slash choosing for me. And yeah, because I can't decide. There's too many and this time I told myself only 12 because some of the ones I had planned, like I had planned like 16 I believe last year, I didn't end up reading, so this time I was very, very careful and specific. Actually, let's start with one of those because it is a classic. I made you vote a little bit in the book haul that I just hauled these two in. The Idiot and then Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Uh, most people were telling me to read Crime and Punishment. Are you agreeing? Are you disagreeing? Are you going to read this with me? Both of these are over 500 pages, even these edition. Uh, this one has around 550. Same with this one. So they're like the same size, even though they really don't look like the same size they are. So you choose, which one am I torturing myself with? <laughs> but really, I've just never read any Russian classics and they've been raved about so much that I'm kind of scared. I'm scared that all the long names, because I'm assuming they will have Russian names, will be something that will confuse me or that I just won't get it. Maybe the translation or just me being me. Your decision, help me out, which one? Actually, I have one more classic to make you vote because I'm a wuss and cheating a little bit. Uh, last year, if you haven't seen the video, I'll link down below, I was reading Le Comte de Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. Uh, this edition is in two parts. Both books were over 700 pages, so I did, you know, read one of the books, but I realized that books that are like in two books, I can do, I will put one down and be like, yeah, I, I'm done when I'm not. So you decide, am I continuing and finishing the book or am I reading Les Trois Mousquetaires, which is The Three Musketeers? Uh, basically, I have been very intimidated with uh, classics. Again, because I find them quite slower pace, usually speaking. Uh, these ones are in French, which isn't an issue. My first language is French, so really, I don't know why I'm always scared of them. I feel like I just haven't read any in so long that I'm like kind of rusty a little bit. But I found the first part quite interesting. Even though, yes, the story's a little stretch, but uh, the author was being sassy at time and I, I liked it. So, am I being a responsible person and finishing this one? Or am I going with this one? You choose. Ooh, the Three Musketeers has 900 pages. I'm really hoping my camera will not try to focus on faces. My camera loves faces, except mine. So, out of these, I will have two like true classics because they scare me. That's the goal of the challenge. They're over 500 pages. I also have two books that are literary fiction. I enjoy it, but again, I find that the language is more complicated and that it's usually slower pace or they will break your heart in pieces. <laughs> uh, you probably already know what's coming. <sighs> A Little Life. I have been told so many times that this book will break me and that I will be completely depressed afterwards, no book will compare, and that I will probably hate myself for doing it. So obviously, what am I doing? Putting it on this list and reading it this year because that's what we do here. But seriously, all I know is that uh, it's about a group of friends living in New York and it's almost like torture porn, like everything bad keeps happening to them and that I will cry a lot. I don't cry often in books, but I'm 
I'm open to it. <laughs> but this edition is so scary, like literally the size of my head. And I discovered that hard covers scare me, which is probably why I don't have that many on my shelves. So who's willing to read this with me this year? Because come on, I am selling it, right? <laughs> uh, the next one is The Secret History by Donna Tart, which is another literary fiction that I've heard a lot of people mention. I've seen it on so many lists of like, you know, best book of all time type of thing. I know that it's about a group of people in university and their unlikable characters and that I believe there's some type of like mystery happening here. I like to go into my books pretty blind, but I feel like this one is scary because it has 600 pages actually. This one has over 700 pages and again, it's big so it's probably more. I feel like every time I hear people talk about it, they either loved it or hated the character so much that they didn't finish the book. So I'm just curious at this point to know where I stand and I'm hoping I'm gonna like it because I've heard so much about the author and her other books, which uh, Goldfinch. I feel that's kind of how it works, right? You hear an author or a book constantly mentioned and then you just want to know, how would I feel about it? So who wants to read that one too? Uh, this one is a modern classic, but as someone that loves sci-fi, I feel like it's always recommended to me all the time and it's just about time that I actually read it. Dune, everyone mentioned this book to me and I'm so scared I'm not gonna like it or that I will find boring or that like I just will never finish it because it's big. This edition has almost 700 pages. So again, it's a big one. It's a hardcover too, so even more scary. But literally all I know is that it's a hard sci-fi and that it's a classic that everyone needs to read in their life. So you know what? I'm doing it. We are doing it. Some of you probably haven't read it either, so. Who wants to read that one with me? But like, it feels like one of those books that if you don't like it, people will hate you. <laughs> kind of how it is, right? But this edition is pretty, so I want to actually read it. I have some YA books too. The first one being The Passage. <laughs> oh my God, I can never pronounce a word that is written the same way in French. The French just comes out. It's just bleh. Uh, same thing with the name, actually. So if I'm being French, it would be The Passage by Justin Cronin. I'm assuming The, pa the Passage. Why, why am I struggling here? The Passes, The, the Passes? The Passage by Justin Cronin. I fooled everyone there. Uh, this is mentioned to me as a post-apocalyptic book. I love post-apocalyptic books. Two actually very, very popular ones were in my wrap-up from last year. So again, I'll link that down below if you want to know my opinion on them. But uh, this one I believe might be like zombies or something like that. I can't, I'm open to it. I love the cover, which is like duochrome. And it's a huge scary heart cover and it has almost 800 pages. I actually do have the audiobook that I had put on my library like wish list, waiting list. So I will probably be able to do like back and forth if I feel like this might be a bit slower paced. I feel like sometimes when I read a big book, it gets easier to just read, listen to some of it while I do other stuff. It doesn't seem as big because I can't see the pages, you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm hoping I'm gonna enjoy this because this is so popular and it's always mentioned like, you know, why post apocalyptic book type of thing. So it's a trilogy too. So if I like it, I'll be able to actually continue. That's one of the other things that I did change from last year. I didn't mention it in my wrap up, but I included last first book in a series or yeah, because after that, I just never finished series. <laughs> so you'll notice there's a lot of standalone, which much better for me. More standalone, I am planning on including some horror because I tend to read mystery, thriller, horror books in the fall. So I wanted to have some stuff to read then. Uh, the first one is Needful Things by Stephen King. I am trying apparently to read all of his books. Uh, it's probably gonna be impossible, but you know, a girl can try. And <laughs> most of his books are like scary big, including this one. This one has almost a thousand pages. I only know what uh, the book is about because I think there was a Rick and Morty episode that was about this book. So all I know is that uh, a little uh, store appears in a little town and they're selling weird stuff and then people don't actually pay with money, but they like, horrible stuff starts happening to them. But I mean, there has to be more in this book because it's so big, but I'm very excited to actually read it. It has really, really great reviews. And then the other book is from his son, Joe Hill. This is uh, Nosfer 2. So I'm assuming vampires, right? Uh, I was told that this one was kind of close to Christmas. So maybe I'll like read it in like November, like October, November, and have my dose of horror. 
Again, pretty much all I know, I kind of prefer, again, going into it pretty blind. But this one has also 700 pages. It doesn't look like it, right? I feel like this is one of those that are like, oh, I can read that, and then you're like, ooh, maybe not. But I mean, it's still better than a big hardcover. <laughs> Speaking of which, I have one there because, damn. Uh, this one was actually on my list last year, but it's one of those books that I didn't end up picking from the jar, so this year, since I will only have 12, I will be able to read it. This is kind of a modern classic, I guess, uh, sci-fi. It's, again, been given to me as a recommendation almost on a daily basis. This is Seven Eve by Neil Stevenson. I believe, if I remember correctly, the plot was something like the moon crashes on the earth? I think. I hope so. This sounds pretty cool. Uh, but I was kind of scared of the writing. I feel like I tried to read like the first chapter of another book by him and it was really complicated. But now that I look at this one, it seems okay. So, oh, okay. See, I just opened the first chapter and it says after the moon blew up. Yeah, I'm reading that book. I am so reading that book. Okay. Nice. I feel like I didn't include a lot of fantasy, but I feel like I will read some no matter what. So it doesn't really matter. Except this one. This is Promise of Blood by Brian McClellan, uh, which is the book one in the Powder Mage trilogy. This is a recommendation that I also get quite often. It's not mentioned that often on booktube, but I've seen it on lists of, you know, best fantasy of all time on Goodreads, and I'm curious to actually get to read it. I believe I found this one, like, at the library, and I was like, yeah, the reviews are actually really positive, and has 550 pages, so it's not too bad, and I wanted to include some books that are quick reads, because you might have noticed a lot of these don't seem like they will be quick read, maybe like the passage, the passage, close enough. So I wanted to include some that would be quicker, because some months I will not be able to, you know, read a very slow paced book, sometimes I'm just not in the mood, I'm too stressed to actually relax enough to enjoy them, or I have so many other books that I want to read that I, you know, I need something easier. So that's why this year I included this book and then another one you'll see in a second. But it is the first book in a series though, but I'm open to it because if I fall in love, I will be able to read the rest and then read more books and try to beat my result of last year. I believe I had read in total 20 books throughout the whole year. So if I fall in love with a big series, I will read more faster, you know? And by the way, this is apparently awesome because even Brenda Sanderson says so on the cover. Just plain awesome. If you want to make me read a book, that, that's the way of doing it. So I was mentioning uh, another one that is a quick read is going to be this one, which is La Passe Miroir by uh, Christelle Dabot. The first book of this series being Les Fiancés de l'Hiver. So it is a French book, but it was recently translated. I'll put on the screen what the name is because I don't remember what it is. I think it's like a, winter, a winter's promise. Boom, memory. Uh, so I will be reading the French one just because it's in French and I know French, so I might as well. I feel like books are usually better when you don't read a translation. So uh, all I know about this one is that it's a YA fantasy with magic. A lot of people were comparing it to Harry Potter when it came out, but I feel like everyone likes to compare everything to Harry Potter just to try and sell a book. And apparently all it has in common is like a main character that learns magic and she wears glasses. <laughs> or maybe people that told me about it were just a little passive aggressive. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really curious to read it. It's fairly short for uh, this type of book. It has still over 500 pages. It's like 565-ish. So I feel like it should be a pretty quick read because it's a YA one and I'm excited to see if I'm going to actually enjoy it. This one is one of those that has one of my favorite tropes, which is someone reliving their lives over and over again. That and like people reliving their day. I love reading about those. If you have any recommendation, please tell me because I've read a bunch, but I'm trying to read like as many as possible so I can do a video reviewing all of them and tell you which ones are worth it, which ones are not, in my opinion, obviously. And this one I had gotten at my library a really long time ago. It's been on my shelves for so long and people were, keep mentioning to me that I need to read it. And I'm like, I have it. Why am I not picking it up? Because it's a big hardcover. <laughs> um, it has just over 500 pages. So I think it's just because I'm intimidated because once again, hardcovers, I'm really discovering things here. <laughs> I hadn't realized how scared I was of them. Uh, some people were telling me though that this one is a bit more slow paced than the other ones I've been reading, kind of like literary fiction-ish. We shall see how it goes. But I believe in this book though, the main character is a woman, which I feel like very often when I read these books, it's a guy. So kind of balancing it out. I'm assuming it might be more like historical fiction than the other ones I've been reading. Usually they're more like thriller-ish, kind of. This is where I get super confused because I wanted to add one more big sci-fi because I am so scared of them. And I feel like so many sci-fi books or series that I want to read are 
humongous and I just don't pick them up. I keep buying them and not reading them. These might not be the most well-known books on booktube but in the world they seem to be because I buy a lot of my books to use like my library sale mostly because they're so cheap and I go like on Goodread and I realize oh this book has like 50,000 reviews and they're like super positive. Why am I not reading this? Why is no one talking about it? So probably because they're older but I wanted to let you vote. You decide. This one there's a bunch but I want to choose one to pick and read. So the first one is the one I can't pronounce, The Mutt Mo the Mutt in God's Eye by Larry Nevin and Jerry Purnell. I believe this one is a first contact with aliens, so basically humanity starts exploring uh, space and they find a very very old alien civilization, like millions of years old, and that's all I know. But I'm really into like first contact with aliens, so this one, this one is actually another one that is first contact and I realize I think there's another one. <laughs> I'm into that throat right now, can you tell? Uh, this one is The Sparrow by Mary Duria Russell. It's also one of them that a lot of people were telling me to read it. Uh, I believe this one is uh, Humanity Hears Something from the Sky, like uh, music from a certain planet, and then a group of religious people go to try and figure things out, and it's not what they expect. I want to read it. Uh, the other one is Sphere by Michael Crichton. I actually read two of his books in 2018 at Jurassic Park, and the Andromeda Strain, which also actually first contact with aliens. I'm seeing a pattern here. I feel like I've seen the movie of this. Like, there's a spaceship that they find and they try to, you know, make contact with it. Which also 500 pages. All of these are over 500. I also have a classic sci-fi, which is Red Mars by Kim Stanley Robinson. Again, don't know much about it except that everyone says that you have to read one of his books, especially that one, so... And then last but not least, I've actually never heard anyone talk about it. Um, the Reality Dysfunction by Peter F. Hamilton. I know he's really well known as a sci-fi author, but I never hear anything about it. I saw it at my library and I was like, ooh, that cover is pretty. So I checked online, the reviews were really positive, but it has almost 1100 pages. That's why I've never picked it up. <laughs> Scary. Which one do you want me to read? Which one do you want to read with me? because I don't know. I need to pick one and I was like last minute being like oh maybe I want to read that one and that one and I couldn't choose. Like part of me is like maybe I shouldn't include that one because it's a thousand pages which was one of the things I realized last year that like when they're too big it's too much to try and read it in a month you know what I mean? But the goal is to get less scared of big books so you choose. So this is my big book reading challenge for 2019. Let me know if you want to participate, let me know if you have read any of these, what you thought about them, obviously spoiler free. Uh, let me know also if you want to participate or uh, the choices, the books you want me to pick out of the ones I wasn't sure. Don't forget to give this one a big thumbs up for trying to challenge yourself in 2019. We can do this. And don't forget to subscribe because you have to see me struggle all year. <laughs> and I will be putting on the screen uh, two more videos that I've done that I recommend you check out and I will see you in my next one. Bye.